supporting cast. <laughs> we lie. We lie. We lie. So chat, 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 chat room. All right. So ah. do I need to, to, to um? It's vibes. Do, Three okay. things are vibes, you know. All right. Cause I'm African and I'm grown and I'm a rebel. Watch out. Well, I'm a rebel. Day up on the street, and I'm a rebel. And the day I wake in my profession, I'm a rebel. Day up on the street, and I'm a rebel. And the day I wake in my profession, we lots of little youth, lots of little youngsters. We grow up in a ghetto with me. Roots music. My mother, my father, them give me the pressure. I want to go before I was sleeping. We struggle every day. Just to make things better, just to make things better, Mr. the future. I know time we hear my mother and my father. I don't know why we left Jamaica just to come to England and work in a freezer. We made white man cross me and call with nigger, but it's milk and honey. Them did a look far, and that's the only reason why them come here. To the white man, they say them superior, and them look on me. At the inferior, when they after they didn't try to keep we under, but we know we got a good time to see now. I'm a rebel, yes, sir. I'm a rebel, 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 I'm
it, it was six, just just three tunes a day. Okay. I went there in the morning and I link up with my professor. He gave me the rhythms, mm -hmm. and then I just went home. I know, I know what kind of person he is. You know what I mean? So for me, I just tried to give him the topics and the lyrics that I I knew he would like. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, I went there. I took the music home. Mm -hmm. And in, um, went there one day. I done three tracks. And then went back the next day and done the other three, you know? So, so Rebel on the Roots Corner. Yeah, man. So amazing. And, you know, I want to talk to you about, you know, the music and the life, the whole, everything that comes together. Now, yes, I you were born in London from a Jamaican yes. heritage. Yes. Now, yes. now, raised up from Jamaican parents in London, at what point in your life you went back to Jamaica to have that Jamaican experience? Um, I think I went there when I was pretty young. Um, mm -hmm. when, I was, when we was kids, we went there as a family, you mm -hmm. know. Um, family so maybe trip, when yeah. I was about, yeah, like a family trip about eight or nine I went out there and um, just for, you know, just to, to, to see where my parents were born and right, where right, right. they live and the land that they owned. We have land in Trelawney and we in a place called Troy, mm -hmm. which is near, I think it's near Christiana mm -hmm. out there in, um, in Jamaica. And then... Um, so we went out there when I was young, me and my two sisters, we went for holiday. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I really got my first taste of the Caribbean, okay. the taste of um, Jamaica. And it was crazy for me because obviously being yeah. born in England mm -hmm. and then coming off the plane in Jamaica. <laughs> and, and, so a and different see, experience. <laughs> yeah, and seeing just black people. Yeah, you know when you when you come because remember you grow you're born and grow in England so you're used mm -hmm. to seeing white people everywhere this is your you know life. and then yeah so when you come off the plane it's like wow okay <laughs> you know but you know but yeah so that was the kind of shock first kind of shock mm -hmm. experience but then obviously you know you 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 go and you see the culture and the food and the the vibes and the mm -hmm. and everything and you fall in love with the place and I was no different from um anybody else you know what I mean I fell in love with Jamaica straight away but yeah that was the first time and then I went back when I was around I think I went back when I was around 15 16 because my parents were thinking of letting us go to Jamaica to live permanently, you know. So, but my mom decided that, you know what, she better let us stay in the UK because she felt there was more opportunity for yes. us yes. in the UK. So my dad, he was ready to go. So he went and my mom stayed with us, okay. you know what I mean, in the UK. So yeah. that's kind of how it went. And that was a good move. That was a good yeah. Mom because yeah, she, mom is, we have the mom, we have the yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Now, mom was so a at what, Yeah. So at what point in your your life growing up you decide that music is part of me, rapping, you know, no, first yeah. being a writer. You know, being yeah. a writer, you could write your lyrics out and stuff like that. You yeah. can remind it and things well, like well, that. Well, 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 how it played out, I mean, obviously, remember you're a young boy mm -hmm. growing up in England, and in those days, the community was more tight. We were more together. It was more like us against them, mm -hmm. you know. So there was more of a community-based vibe. And obviously, you know, my parents were from Jamaica, you mm -hmm. know. So in the household... It's mm -hmm. like you're in Jamaica, yes. you know, but then obviously when you come out, you're dealing with Tom and Joe blogs and yeah. a different culture. You know what I mean? So my parents, obviously, my dad was a sound man. Mm -hmm. He had his, he had his yep. own sound system. He had, yes, his amp, he had his valve amps, 
mm-hmm. and, and all these things. Yeah, you know what we mean? call them tube amplifier when they tube get hot. Amplifier. That's when they right. get hot, they, the, the color is so right. they got purple, red. Yeah, yeah. You know, the hotter yeah. they get. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Get, yeah. The so the sound system go push. Yeah, it. so my dad had um he had those you know, he had that sound system culture in him. So Obviously, like most those days, it was the blues dances. It was the house parties, you know. And my dad had a house party that was um, popular in the area. So after people, you know, would go to work on a Friday and they go home, freshen up, and then they'll head to my dad's basement, you know. So a lot of the community used to go to my dad's basement to 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 listen to yeah. music yeah. and to jam and to chill and to you know and you know and all of vibe but so from there obviously my dad is playing you know Jim Reeves you know he's playing you know because remember in in Jamaica Reeves, yeah Charlie yeah, Pride, Charlie Pride. yeah, yeah <laughs> all these guys Kenny Kenny Rogers and yes. all of them yep. you know. So he yep. was playing these guys because obviously remember in Jamaica, you know, the reggae wasn't on the radio as much. You know what I mean? So we it was those kind. So I used to listen to these Jim Reeves tune and said, boy, this this is this good, but it's not really mm-hmm. for me. Right. You know what I mean? But um then obviously in play you right, in play big youth. In mm-hmm. play Dennis Al Capone, in play Tapazuki, in play Dillinger, yeah, in play Dillinger, all, all these, these guys. guys. Lone Ranger so, is there, yeah. Yeah, all these brothers. So when I heard them man there now, mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, this is for me. This is what I love, you know. And then obviously you had, you know, the Dennis Brown, the Burning Spear. Mm-hmm. The Gregory Isaac. I mean, for me, Dennis Brown was our star yes. in my era of growing up, yes. more so than the King. You know what I mean? But yes. Dennis are the Prince. But for us, yep. you know, sounds like tunes like "Have You Ever" and "Hold On to What You Got" and "Revolution" and all these tunes. Mm-hmm. We used to, you know, vibe we used to lo- yeah. vibe to those tunes. So for me. It was when I heard, you know, Dennis Al Capone, you know, and Big U, and then at a later stage, mm-hmm. you start to hear Brigadier Jerry, Charlie Chaplin, Charlie Chaplin, Josie Wills, yep. uh, all the man there. Professor Nuts, and, and then, all them guys there, yeah. but it, then, then after them man there, it, you know, the, the 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 people that I gravitated to was Papa San, mm-hmm. Lieutenant Stitchy. Stitchy. And Professor Nuts. Professor Nuts. Because no. within the time, my... Papa San and Lieutenant Stitchy was on a roll them times. Yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. man, they, those, yeah. those are my top three. My top, num- my number one is Professor Nuts, okay. then Papa yeah. San, and Story- then Story- Lieutenant Teller. Stitchy. You, you yeah. know what? Yes. You, know, you know, as you mentioned Professor Nuts, you remind me of Professor Nuts now. You know yeah. why? Storytelling. Yeah. Storytelling, yeah. just like a couple of chats and that I heard, you're giving a story. You're not just jumping yeah, from A to B to Z to Q yeah. and come back. You give the that yeah. same storyline. Yeah, story that's line. why I like nuts. Apart from the humor, mm-hmm. it's just the way that he the med- the metaphors, if that's the right word, and the way yes. that he puts um his lyrics together. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I know that we also inspired them, you know, because we reminded them of themselves. You know what I mean? And also uh, also a British rapper, Slick Rick the Ruler. That's right. You know, a very, very unique dude. Yes. You know, and, you know, didn't probably, for me, get the recognition what he deserved, you know what I mean, when it comes to one of the iconic yeah. Rappers, yeah. you know, they don't yeah. talk about him like how they talk oh, about they some talk about certain team, yeah. Yeah, you know, but um, I have but you, mm-hmm. I have yeah, Tracy yeah. here in the room saying, Tipper, you come in, 
my hometown in Doncaster or something like that. Um, this oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, the so 29th of you. July. Yeah, you see? She's ready for you. July. She ready. Yeah, and <laughs> I'm I have ready. To, I'm, I'm ready. Uh, Cynthia from Birmingham saying, I'm going to watch your Saxon song play back. In the 80s. <laughs> All right. She used to. <laughs> yeah. Emma, no. So, yeah. Much you, respect. You, 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 you brought up on, you, you know, different, especially Saxons, a big, big song that, you know, everybody yeah. know about and things like that. Yeah, but so, if you, if you, I mean, if from, I mean, the real, it, it begin before Saxon, though, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, because um, I had a, a, a youth sound with my friends from school because my dad had his own sound system oh, so in the basement. Which was, what's that, the mobile reggae disco, which was, right? Yeah, which mm -hmm. was like called Musical Messiah, you know? So he had his little name for his little sound. So I used to just go and mess about with my dad's sound. <laughs> and then when you, and then when you leave out from that, you, you know, you, you, you have friends at school. Yes. So because it's part of the culture, me and my friend, um, there's a guy called, there's a DJ on Vibes FM called Commander B, you know, and his name's Paul Blake. And we had a little youth man sound, right. you know, and then f that was called Younger Frontline, you know, because Frontline was a big sound in Brixton oh, at the time. Okay. So we made up our little bedroom mm -hmm. sound, yes. you know, called Younger <laughs> Frontline, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then from there, I went on to a sound called Mikey Dread. You know, mm -hmm. because um, there's a sound called MJR, mm -hmm. right? Which is Mikey, Jigs, and Robert, right? And Robert, they had a yeah. sound. And my cousin brought me to Mikey, right? And I was and I was on their sound. That was kind of like the first sound, first sound that you 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 got. And I really went out. That was going out there. Mm -hmm. And then then from there, now Mikey, he was the cousin of Cecil Rennie. Cecil Rennie is the owner of King Tubby's Sound in the UK. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. So oh. Mikey brought me to Cecil, mm -hmm. you know? And then I started to go around with King Tubby's Sound. And you know, Cecil is the cousin of the original King Tubby. King Tubby, in yes. Jamaica. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, in Jamaica. Oh. So, so that's where I kind of... Get my, my, my right. So, so right there, coming up, you were grounded. Keep following that trend right there where you're supposed to. Yeah, be. from sound. Yeah, so from, it's just when, it's like a steady progress. So, you know, and that's basically what I did. I made a steady progress, you know what I mean, in my career. So yeah. it went from my dad from the, underneath the basement to... Oh a friend sound to a, a, a youth man sound and then to a, a big sound which Tobby's was playing all up and oh, down yeah. England so and then you, from mm -hmm, right. yeah go on sorry yeah so your name Anthony Henry government yes Henry. sir where did you came up with Tipper Irie well Tipper Irie was an Irie as you know mm -hmm. means feeling good yes yeah so me as an artist when from a young age you know i was always a cheeky mm -hmm. kind of chappy kind of person <laughs> so when i when i so i always you know, my <laughs> brethren my brethren was called skipper mm -hmm. you know so and he's called from skipper he went to general slater and then to ras triumphant but he he was called skipper at first and true he was always together mm -hmm. You know, it was like, boy, it, one, it, something like one day, it just up, uh, Mr. Boy, you yeah, skip about me and Tipper. Yeah, Tipper. You know I mean? You know? And then there was a DJ at the time called Tipper Rankin, mm. you know? And he's done some, he's done one and two tunes, but he, he passed away, you know, God okay. rest his soul, um, not too long ago. I think it was last year. Oh, okay. So me just like the name, right. you know? Tipper. So me say, you know what? Him of the ranking, so I gotta call myself Irie. Irie. because you're always an Irie type the Irie, of guy. Irie yeah. Brat guy, you know. So <laughs> I just, I just said, Cho, you know what? I'm a calm artist name. I mm -hmm. got Tipper Irie. So I just give myself that name, Tipper Irie, and nice. from there, so I just work with it. 
Okay. So how would you, Tipper Irie, describe your music right now to the audience? How would you um, describe the type of music you do? Well, my well, the first thing I would say is versatility. Versatile. Yeah, because I do roots music. Yeah. I do lovers rock music. I do my predominantly I do dance hall music. Yeah. You know. But I also, you know, do hip hop. I also do jungle. And if the feeling is right, you know, I will do, you know, a bit which of one, Which music. one you call? Which one you call jungle? Well, jungle is is um so, is a music from the UK okay. that is inspired by reggae music. But okay. the BPM is a lot higher. So basically, you know, where reggae might be 86 or... Mm -hmm. 90 BPM jungle might be you know 130 or something okay. like that. So it's higher, more like tempo, it's a higher tempo. tempo. Yeah. It's like dance music, but mm -hmm. more 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 rootsy. You know what? You, you yeah, know? and what we call it's in the techno, especially in the yeah. Streets, yeah, in the techno yeah, 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 yeah. It's more like a techno vibe, but mm -hmm. it's more rootsy. So mm -hmm. for me, it's a very it's very difficult to put a um one kind of description of yourself to my music or of myself because I make music. So, and what I mean by that is if it feels right, it goes out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's with me. So, but predominantly I would say, I guess I am a reggae dancehall MC, mm -hmm. but because I, 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 um, I deal with a lot of different genres mm -hmm. because I compliment singers. Yes. You know, I do, I've done a lot of um, combination type things like Chaka Demas and Players, and I've mm -hmm. done tunes with people like Peter Huntingale, Lloyd Brown, Winsome, Janet Lee Davis, Black Eyed Peas, all different yeah. kind of people. So we, we com I complement. So for me, you know, I guess the main thing would probably be reggae. Dance or MC lyricist. Yes. Have you ever came across Jojo Mac? Yes, I think um, she's actually recorded a song for one of for my label. Oh, you know, yeah, that's a very she's good done, friend of mine. And, I, and I, yeah, she's I, a very, I heard last night. I'm like, whoa, Jojo Mac. I gotta find out. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we did. Um, we I did a, a rhythm. Which was an Alton, the Alton Ellis, Alton Ellis. rhythm. Um, it's an Alton Ellis tune. I'm trying to remember the tune off at the top of my head, but we called the rhythm the UK flu, and which is because basically what we wanted to do was give the DJs them a touch of the UK vibe and the UK mm -hmm. flu, you know, mm -hmm. because we we felt at the time that we wasn't getting no looking. So we just kind of wanted to the world to kind of like focus on what was happening in the UK, like what Saxon did. You know? Yes. Now you starting out in the business, and yeah. even even now, what has been your biggest challenge in the music business? Um, well, the challenge is getting our music played on mainstream radio, mm -hmm. because I have a lot of hit tunes, yeah. and I can say that. Confidently, of course, of course because you know. if I could, yeah. if I could turn my camera around, mm -hmm. you could look on my wall, and I have plaques. Yes, you know, I have plaques, which is British Reggae Industry, mm -hmm. Winsome, number one tune, Superwoman, 1989, Ragamuffin Girl, mm -hmm. number one tune, 1989, you know, best British. MC, 1990, you know, Entertainment oh, yeah. Enterprise C Celebrity Award, you know, 1986, 1987, you know, Grammy nomination, Ooh. you know, um, over there, Elephant, over here, this, that, you know, Key of the City. So it's like, yeah, yeah. I don't have to brag about what I do. It, it, it's there it, to see. It's there to see. 
So for me, the challenge is obviously being in a country where the, you're not in control and the, the, the powers that be decide what John what, public what John, yeah. get to listen to. Because if you search for new music from Tipper Irie, you will always find it. You will always, but you have to dig. But people, the other, the average John public, they don't want to dig for things. They no. don't want to search for things. They want things just in their face. They want to walk down the street and see that huge poster and say, oh, Tipper Irie's still there. You know, mm -hmm. they want to turn on the TV. They're watching a movie. The ad comes on, oh, Tipper Irie's got a new album out. But if they got to seek, it's just like you, you gone and you gonna seek me out. Mm -hmm. That's why you you be like, wow, okay, he's got a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff happening. I've got loads of, you know, content for mm -hmm. my broadcast because he's actually still consistent yeah, yeah. Still, and still, still doing current. good music yes. and current. Yeah. So the, the biggest challenge is getting the music played on mainstream radio so every John public out there yeah, we'll can realize yeah. that reggae deserves to be, you know, played on okay. on mainstream. So will that and, that continue? Yeah, no 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 yeah. that no so continue. That, so continue. that being said and done, what past accomplishment you have accomplished that you at this particular point right now feel much satisfied to where you at? Well, for me, it's like I'm I like to be independent, you know, or and I like to mm -hmm. I don't sit down with a chip on my shoulder and say, right. Well, they're not playing our music and you know, I should give mm -hmm. up and I should this and I should that, you know. Um, what I do, I like to rebel against, you know, I rise to yeah. the oppression. Rebel against like. the, the, the Babylon system. Yeah, if you like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, you know, you, so you, you want to fight and you push yourself mm -hmm. and you, you find that you, you know, you look at people that are successful mm -hmm. and you see and you think, well, how did they become successful how did they do it they didn't you know the key thing is hard work another thing is dedication yes you know persistence belief mm -hmm. you know all these things you have to have in yourself because people will tell you oh you're never going to get another hit tune yeah you know and and then if you're if you're silly you you start to believe them you know what i mean because, you know, it may be one year might go by, two years might go by, and you don't get nothing. You know, there's no tune that's blowing up. And as you know, you're as big as your last tune and whatever, especially when you're somebody like me. You know what I mean? So for, for me, I just look at it, nah, you know what? But work harder. At, at, and, one, at one point, you chill for about a four year. You had a four year gap. Um, well, uh, well, for me, like you said, people might say that, but well, it's you're not still like, in the grind. You're still in the you're grind. still in the grind, but okay. you know what I mean. Because you might sometimes, it's like for me now, I've just released an album, Living the mm -hmm. Dream. You know what I mean? And so for me, there's no point in me putting out another album and another album and another. You can do that, mm -hmm. but why? I need to give that album time to breathe. I need yes. to take singles off of the album and, and push and out my push videos out and work yeah. with that album for a while and let that album sink in and push that album out as much as I can. So that's what I do. I could release an album every year, mm -hmm. but I choose not, not to. In, in Jamaica, they do this a lot. Comparing to, you know, also where, where your status is right now, you don't have to. But yeah. They normally drop their singles. They drop their singles. They jump on the rhythm. One person come out with the rhythm. This producer come out with this rhythm. Everybody, you know, jumped on it. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Out. If they do get a buzz off that that track, okay, they drop another. You know, they jump on every rhythm that they could get on. Dropping singles. Yeah. Whatever yeah. rhythm make that note, then they go and push an album after that, knowing that hit single is what gonna push the album. Yeah. Well, basically, 
you started out first dropping the album instead of dropping yeah. singles and stuff. Yeah, was it mean, was it a harder push for you to push that album more um, for you than dropping singles? It, well, for me, it's like I started um, when I when I was on the sound. Mm-hmm. You know, I left when I left King Tubby's. I I was entering talent competitions. You know, okay. and and I started to win those talent competitions. You know, so and then my, fans from then. Oh. Yeah, the people, people. St- I started to build up a little movement within the community. You know what I mean? Okay. And then you know, Musclehead and Dennis Rowe, Lloyd Francis and Dennis Rowe from Saxon Sound. They saw me, and obviously they saw my talent. So they wanted me to to come with them to Lewisham to mm-hmm. join with Saxon Sound. And at the time on King Tubby's, Tubby's wasn't really paying anything. You know, he was. You'd go, you'd do the work, you'd go on the mic and this and that. But at the end of the night, you wasn't really coming on with much. So I said, okay. So basically how I did it, I went with Saxon um, because they were paying me a little bit more, not much more, but they were paying me a little something. Yeah. And then there was, there was also a lot of other sounds in the area. You had sounds like Sir Lloyd, you had sounds like Nasty Rockers, you had sounds like jam down rockers you had sounds like buchanan you had all these sound systems so basically wherever there was a mic Mm -hmm. i would go to the dances you know Mm -hmm. and and to get seen and whatever but anyway when saxon saw me and i went over there they you know i maxi priest was there papa levi was there Mm -hmm. peter king was there Daddy Colonel was there. All these talented people were there. So there was an MC that used to roll with me called Daddy Rusty, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I brought Rusty with me. He was my key brethren at the time. So we went over there. And then obviously the tapes and the cassettes started Mm -hmm. to circulate with Saxon. And then it just blew up. So we then, you know, developed a following. You know, and so this was before, you know, I made my first record when I was 17, which was mm-hmm. the opposite, which which was for Saloy. And then I, I did a series of, um, you know, uh, live albums, which was called DSYC 1, 2, and 3, which was recorded in Dick Shepherd School, which is a, a school oh, in South London. Okay. So after that now, then the Saxon thing blew up. And then when Saxon blew up now, all of the record labels in England became interested to grab what was on Saxon. So Virgin took Maxi, Island Records took Papa Levi, and Greensleeve took Tipper Irie, Daddy Colonel, Daddy Sandy, and Rusty. You know, and then that's where my music, music career really started to take off with my first album, which was, well, is it really was happening on to me? Sleeve, right? Yeah, so, the, I mean, it's like you had Tipper Irie and the Colonel just to speak. Then you had, it's good to have the feeling you're the best, yes, which is a song that I wrote about myself and Saxon Sound, but mm-hmm. mainly about the sound, you know, not to sound too big-headed, you know. And then, That's what um, it is, man. yeah, at the time, you know, and then um, the album came. I did um, Smiley Culture, had a hit mm-hmm. with Police Officer, and then my tune was The Complaint Neighbor, you know, which was from the first album, Is It Really Happening to Me? But that's yeah. what I, I, you know, that's how my, my recording career really started to take off. And then I did my first album, which was Is It Really Happening to Me? So I had a few singles, the singles going before with. the album the came. Album. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So ladies that's how it kind of started. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen in the room, make sure to share the page. And if you guys have any questions, drop it in the room. If I do miss it, just keep dropping it until I, until I pick it up, okay? So make sure I ask a question. Now, success is a big word. Yes, I. You give me the, def- the definition of success to your career. Uh, well, first of all, peace of mind, you know, because 
obviously when you earn a certain amount of money mm -hmm. it gives you peace of mind you know so it helps you not to stress about mm -hmm. the everyday things that like what people have to stress about occasionally mm -hmm. you know because everybody has got the same issues same problems so it's like paying your bills mm -hmm. you know once you know you can pay your bills and you the and the thing that's the most important thing the roof over your head mm -hmm. you know so long as you can deal with those things success gives you that peace of mind okay. you know and once you've got peace of mind you don't have stress and once you're in a position where you don't have to stress it makes life a lot more bearable as, a as lot we, more as we, could, as we could look at you you don't look stressed with that age of yours no but i mean <laughs> we all i mean we, we we all go through yes we things. do we do and we, we, do. we got things you know there's everyday things this is why i try to tell people look man why are we stressing with all these things we've got you know why are we doing bad things to each other why are we hurting with each other why are we distressing each other we have got normal natural stresses to look forward to whether we like it oh, or no. not i'm looking at a picture of my mom here i'm looking at a picture of my sister they're gone you know so for me to wake up every day and just say boy father give thanks when we wake up today i'm happy because i know that i've actually woken up and I haven't got to worry about bills and this and that and stress and stuff like that. So to me, that's a, you know, that's a good element or good reason to say, well, yeah, I'm, I'm successful because I don't have to stress about these things. People can bring stress to you and throw stress your way. But you have to know how to dodge them and to, and to, and, and to bounce them out of your way and then still work around them and still go on your way you know obviously the awards um that i've received the accolades that i've received yeah. from my peers or from people you know i mean me having these awards you know i treasure them because obviously it's people giving me recognition and for, your for the work, work for the hard work that I've done, you know? And so I'm grateful, you know, to my fans, most of all, because without them, I wouldn't be in a position to pay my bills yeah. or unless I'm going to be doing something that I probably don't enjoy doing. I didn't like mixing cement, you know? I didn't like carrying a hundred pound cement bags. So when I had the opportunity to do music and realized that, wow, I could actually make a living out of this. Oh, yeah. I wanted to give it my 100% because I didn't really want to do, I like driving, you know, but I didn't really want to do a driving job, you know. So I was hell bent, bent on trying to make a success of my, my talent and using my talent to make my me be able to feed my family, feed myself, and so I guess the the accolades that I have, mm -hmm. the peace of mind that I have, you know, because I'm I'm not I'm I'm not a millionaire. I should be a multimillionaire, but I'm not. But hey, I'm comfortable. Whereby you know, at the end of the day, I can pay my bills and I can survive and I have a decent living. And I've worked hard mm -hmm. for 35 years. 35 years, to say, be, it again. say it again. I've worked hard for 35 <laughs> years, yes. yeah? So I guess I should be a multimillionaire, but there's things that happen in your life. Mm -hmm. You know, people go through things, you know what I mean? That happen and you know, you go through a bad divorce, that happens, they, they take mm -hmm. off and they do this do that that so things happen that you maybe you know why you're not you're not got the funds probably that you should have because things happen along the way and you may lose some here and you lose some there and and stuff happens like that but in in on a whole you know i'll say that i'm i'm happy 
I'm content, I'm comfortable, I don't need very much. Because we don't really need much things. You know, when you think about it, yeah, yeah, you know. So that's my, I guess, my idea of success, to be comfortable, to be able to pay my bills and not have to get up and do, you know, a lot of people have to get up every day and do jobs what they don't like. Don't like. You know, so I am blessed that I get up and I can actually, I look forward to speaking to you. Yes. You know, I look forward to doing my radio show. I look forward to doing the show that I did yesterday, you know, or on Friday, you know. Yeah, I Friday, look forward, Friday, did, yeah. Yeah, Friday I did a show in um, Hitchin, which is um, the north of England. And so I look forward to these things. I When I got to play out and play music and people are paying, paying me to play in a, at, for their birthday, I, mm -hmm. I don't do that because I have to. I do it because I love it. You know, I love playing music. That's do, why I do my radio show. Do what you, know, you I love, love and you love what you yeah. do. That's right. And that is the main, that is the success. That is my, that's, you said it right there, you know, I do what I love, you know what I mean? I love what I do. So that is my success there, right there. Ladies and gentlemen, Tipa Irie is in the building. Now, I'm going to drop a joint, a song here that's called Big People. All yes, right? sir. And listen to this track here, ladies and gentlemen.
I saw one name and I had one of the biggest grin on my face. Yeah. Alexander O'Neill. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? With him, I just did shows with him. Oh, you back did in shows the day. with him? Yeah. So we, just, we were just on the same bill, mm -hmm. you know, a couple of but, times. That's all that connection but, was. What, but why you, you never, you, you could have, you could have do a, do a, do a, a Couple. Yeah, I mean, I did, I did, uh, I Black did, Eyed Peas, you know, Black Eyed Peas. Yeah, Eyes. I mean, Will I Am and they, these yeah. guys, man. They, yeah, that was that was a blessing. Still, I mm -hmm. have to give, give thanks for that little opportunity there. But Alexander and me, we were just on the same bill back in the eighties because obviously, mm -hmm. you know, I had Hello Darling and I had you know yes. a few other tunes, the um, pop and, tunes, you know. And what Hello mean? So, Darling uh, did very well. Did very well. well that was like my first major hit that mm -hmm. tune because um tipper Irie and the colonel just to speak got to number two in the reggae charts and um good to have the female the best got top 10 in the reggae charts right. and complaint neighbor did okay but when hello darling came out it rose the everything to another level, another level. you know what i mean and um it basically got to number 20 in the pop charts. And at the time, it was amazing because obviously I was a sound man, you know, and we was mainly just doing, you know, jumping on old, Green Sleeve then were just putting us on old Studio One remix. Mm -hmm. And um, they weren't being very creative with the rhythms, you mm -hmm. know. And then um, for me, I've always been creative. So when one day I was outside a Saxon and Coxon clash in um, People's Club in Paddington, and, um, you know, this girl walked by and, you know, she looked nice. And we sit down in the sound van and said, Jesus Christ, the fun I get left. So I'm short up, say, hello, darling. And she look up, she went, oh, hello, good looking. <laughs> I'm going to start laugh, you know, because obviously, yeah. you know, girls that used to come to our dances, you know, they were wearing, most of them were into us, you know what I mean? So, but anyway, they, you know, I said, you know what? People say that a lot. Let me, you know, let me go back in at the dance. And because them times I used to think on my, on my toes really quickly. So we're just yes. going at the dance and start saying, hello, darling, hello, good looking, hello, darling. And then Mr. Start make up some lyrics. Oh. And one day, I think I was in a rehearsal and we was, vo I was voicing, in, in fact, it wasn't a rehearsal. I was voicing the tune, it's good to have the feeling you're the best. And there was a break in the recording. I was having trouble with the vocals or whatever. I don't know what I was doing then, but they wanted me to say the yes in a certain way, and I was finding it difficult. So I said, you know what? I need a break. Mm -hmm. And then while I had the break, I was singing. Hello. I started singing, hello, darling. And so my producer, Chris, said, Tipa, what's that, man? I said, boy, is this another vibe that I got, you know? Yeah. And he said, go home and write it. Yeah. So I went home and wrote the lyrics for the song, came back, sung him the lyrics, mm -hmm. and then we said, yeah, now, nah, man, we have to we have to make this Re tune. Yeah, yeah, record it. You know, record it. So then he brought in Lindell Lewis. Um, Lindell Lewis is, um, you know, Can't Be With You Tonight by Judy Boucher. He that's that was a tune that was sandwiched sandwich in between uh oh. Whitney Houston, I Wanna Dance with Somebody dance and, with and, and, and Madonna. So it was a big tune. But anyway, that guy 
Lindell, he was the producer, the main producer. And then you had a guy called Patrick Donegan, who's from a group called the Reggae Regulars. And then you had another, a saxophonist called Ray Carlos, a guitarist called Kyle Brown. So I had really excellent mm. musicians, what he brought together for that production. And we managed to come up with the rhythm. And then we wrote, I wrote the song, Lindell helped me with the harmonies, with the, the right notes and stuff. Yes. And then the tune came out. And when it came out, it just went boom straight to number one in the reggae charts. And then one of the DJs from Capital Radio, um, Kid Jensen, his name is, he heard the song in a club mm -hmm. and wow. said, nah, man, and said, no, this tune needs to be in the pop charts. So he took it and started to play it on Capital okay. Radio. Okay. Yeah. And then you get a bigger and pause then. Yeah, the moment, and yeah. after that, and then they decided to put it on the playlist, and then Radio One, and everybody started to follow, and then the tune just went all the way to number 22 in the national charts, and then that's when I got to do Top of the Pops, mm -hmm. and then my whole life just turned around there. Beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the track that you did by Lloyd Brown. Somebody just yes, came sir. the room. I can't see who's in the chat room, you know. I see something say chat. Chat. It just says chat, but I can't see nobody in there. Every day you get up and you're miserable. If me talk to a girl and you don't 
lonely dog Next day me coming, me don't get lonely dog If me coming on me yard One hour late, not a dumpling or a pit And me don't get on me plate All of a sudden, me party no set And somebody rub over me so I drink your set Yo, you're a miserable woman How will we look and say it up now you let me Myself, that you uh, hate, yeah. But sometimes I'm too forgiving. Mm. I'm too forgiving, you know. Sometimes you might see things and you need to move on, or you need to um, shut people out that you know that um, are really not for you, you know, and. I don't know. I mean, uh, yeah, I think um, I think that's right. You know what I mean? And you know, you you help them and 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 sometimes you think that, and they can't see the help, mm-hmm. or they can't see the good what you're doing. You know what I mean? And they take advantage of it. So sometimes it's just knowing when to 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 spot mm-hmm. people when they're taking advantage of you. You know. All right, got so I think I hate that about myself that I don't I don't cut cut them sooner than <laughs> I should. Yeah. All right. Mute mute the phone. Mute the phone. All right. Yes, I will yes. do that. Now, yeah. now also, what type of friend does Tipper Irie have? Who considers your friend? Boy, there's no, you know I try to keep them at, at a limit, you know, because. You know, the whole of friend, 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 friend. This is why, just going back to your question before, mm-hmm. you know, you might believe some people are your friends and they're for you sometimes, mm-hmm. but a lot of the time they're jealous. You know, they're actually jealous because they want to be where you are or they want to mm-hmm. be in your position or they want to whatever it may be. And so there's not many people that, you know, because a friend is a person, you know, that if you don't see them for five years, and when you see them, it's like you see them every day, you know. So, the, and there's not many, you know, there's not many of those people that I have, mm-hmm. unfortunately, around me. So, at the minute, you know, there's a couple of people. I'd say Daddy Rusty is my mm-hmm. friend, you know, because when I, you know, Peter Hunningale is my friend. You know, there's people like that, you know, that uh, me and them is bonify and I know that I can rely on them. Yes. You know, a friend, a friend, you can phone a friend and say, brethren, me need you for put up a blind, you know. And him come round and him put up the blind for you. 
and him just go make himself a cup of tea and him sit down and him reason and then him gone. And then him gone. You know, yeah. but sometimes you can have friends that they say that you're a friend and them say, boy, you're my brother yeah. and you're my this and you're my that mm -hmm. and you ask them to to to, to drive Do you down the road yeah, yeah, and, they, and they're stretching yeah. out their hand for money. Of course, what can you, you know, do for me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and you know, I just let go a few of them people there. Yeah, you know what I mean, and you well, know, and at the end, you know, that, so when, yeah, when that's said and done, now support. I know your mom was there for you for yeah. the years, and I know she definitely was. You know, I assume that she was one of your biggest support. Anyone yeah. else in the family? Was a big support for you? Yeah, all my family, man. I mean, my sister mm -hmm. helps me with my music. You know, okay. she's what she's a backing vocalist in my band. Oh, beautiful! You know? Beautiful. Yeah, and and if I need her, you know, to do anything, you know, um, she's there. You know what I mean? Um, my lady Amanda, mm -hmm. you know, she's like does all my art. Uh, my invoices, my contracts, mm -hmm. my this, my that. Very She's cool. like another backbone mm -hmm. for me. Well, the main when it comes to them kind of things. And then, you know, my 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 son, Micah, he's there. If I need anything, he's there for me. He's, even now, he's going to do he's the shopping. He's going to go shopping to cook. Uh, cook. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, so, you know, and, um, yeah, so I've got that family, you know, network you know around me that's pretty cool so and they help me out you know and you know so but now, like i said i'm you know yeah i guess that's it really so now when you're out there doing shows and you know yeah. when you're on stage doing shows you know especially in the states you we always talk about grouping you know what yeah no you're on yeah. stage tipper irie is on stage you look down into the crowd yeah you see a sister in who you could see whatever you're saying, she's grasping at it. So you, yeah. you feel her energy, she feels your energy. Yeah. You're building a vibe from just her responding to you. Yeah. And you know, you, you go backstage and you know, whatever they say, sometimes fans always pass security, get backstage. Yeah, yeah. yeah now, yeah. how do you, as an artist, separate yourself from this is a fan and this is somebody that something could happen for a split second well it's well it's well it's a discipline isn't it it's it's having that discipline because obviously you're a man and you might see the shell but you see a shell and you might be attracted to the shell right. but you you know you don't know what's inside of that shell because like you don't answer. know the person. Like the you know answer. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So you have to, you know, discipline yourself in whereby you also, if you're in a relationship with somebody, obviously mm -hmm. you do, you know, you have to think about the hurt, what you're going to cause to that person if you step across the line. You know what for I mean? For, so, for a shell that you don't know more, you just know the shell. That's right, that's right. And the shell can be very tempting, you know what I mean? But you have to know, you know, that it's the shell. And mm -hmm. you might speak to the person and they seem nice, but that's just like, you know, meeting somebody and the shell is nice and the shell tell you to come. And then when you go there, some people are waiting for you, you know? And the next thing you know, you're in another predicament. <laughs> what you didn't imagine. <laughs> so that so you kind of have to use that terminology, because down the road, you know, obviously it might be sweet, but you don't know what around that corner and what might be coming for you. Bite you. So you bite have, you in the ass. Yep. Yeah, bite you in the ass. So you kind of have to have that discipline. Okay, now. Especially, I notice all of your tracks now, clean, yeah. cut, collected, with vocals. What yes. do you think? What, what, what's your um, uh, um, intake on auto-tune? 
Ah, uh, I mean, it's it's like anything um, in moderation, or it suits certain things, and then it might not suit certain things. Like somebody like T Pain yeah. made his <laughs> made career his, on that. Yeah, on that. So <laughs> he he's obviously used it and made a career by using it, and it was successful for him you know what i mean not for everyone. but but not for everybody so at the end of the day for me if you can do it like t-pain done it and made a success out of it and people know you for that then cool but if you're barry's hammond or you're you know tipa Irie, we that we didn't make our career on that so yeah. not to say that you can't auto tune a very salmon tune because there might be a particular tune or one track on his album that you say yeah you know what let's auto tune this these harmonies or these and see how it sounds because it's all in the mixing because we might mix something and the auto tune works for this particular mix yes. this particular sound and if it works, then you go with it. Uh, but it's not every tune that it's going to suit and every tune that it's going to work with. So it's all about in the mix, how you mix, what you choose to use in your mix. Mm -hmm. So a uh, auto tune might work on one particular track on my album, but I won't use it for the whole album. Okay. Maybe one. Now, have you ever did a recording and you leave and... The, 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 the engineer put this touch and whatever, and then when you hear the track, yeah. you say, whoa! Yeah, whoa, yeah. you changed me up too much, bro. What's yeah, that? I mean, I've had a couple of songs, you know, quite a, you know, song, because a lot of the time, you kind of want to, you know, you you might be in, um, I don't know, in Thailand, or you might be in Vietnam, you might be in Cambodia, you know, and I might, because I go to all these places to do shows, you know, and, you know, they, they go, my God, we've got Tipo Irie here, man. We need to do a tune. We need to do a tune. So they might play me a rhythm and a finer tune, you know. It might not be the greatest tune, but so because, you, you know, it. yeah, you, you work with it. You know what I mean? Because you, you want, they, want you, they want you to leave something with them. You know what I mean? So, and sometimes, you know, you might get it back and you think, oh. This is not really up to the standard, you know what I mean? But then sometimes you say, you know what, just make it go on, make them go on. And because, you know, and so sometimes it's, we, I call it taking one for the team, you know? Okay. <laughs> yeah. And, and there's been a few of those kind of recordings where you just take one for the team and you let it go. And sometimes you got to also remember that, it might not work for you, but it might work for somebody else. And it might work for John Public, you know, because there's certain times, you know, you do something and you think, mm, and then it take, you know, you get, you get, you look at the statement and you think, oh, so this tune, people like this tune. People like this tune, yeah. So, so sometimes it swings and it's roundabouts, but I try not to make that happen to many nowadays more i'm t i'm having more control over yes. what i what, what i release like i put that. out yeah. there but people are always contacting me to do stuff and you know you got to keep the the funds coming in so if i'm not doing a dub plate session mm -hmm. and somebody sends me a rhythm and the rhythm is nice you know i will i will put something down put something. and you know, they send me they send me a little money. I put something down, but I like to do it until obviously they're happy. Yeah. You know, so I'll put in the work because sometimes you you send something to somebody they might not like it. You know, mm -hmm. so I said, all right then, and I will scrap the idea, come back with another idea, boom, send that to them. They're like, yes, That's this it. is it. So I work, I work until I get until the producers are happy. With the amount of with the amount of songs you have in your catalog. Have you ever been doing a show and somebody shout up, Tip I me, I want you to do you sing yeah. Welcome yeah. Carol and you're like Yeah. 
I can't remember that. I can't remember. <laughs> How you go around it? Nah, you can't. Nine times out of ten, if somebody do that, I will sing the hook. Because I will remember the hook. Mm -hmm. It's like, and certain countries that you go, they like, because I've done such a vast, I've done, I don't know how much singles and, you know, maybe like 16, 17 albums. So when you go to certain countries, like if I go to Mexico, there's a particular tune that I have to do in Mexico, you know, because um, I'm trying to remember it right now. You see, there's so much music. I can't remember the tune. Um, but yeah, there's a particular tune that I have to do. But I don't do that tune nowhere else apart from when I go to Mexico because it is right. a popular tune in Mexico. Right. So they they so so when I know like I'm going to Bermuda um in a couple of months' time to do a show, and I know there's a guy he's he contacted me online, said, Tip, you coming to Bermuda, man. Mm -hmm. You gotta sing. It's a hit, daddy tip, but it's a hit, daddy tip. It's gonna be a hit, daddy tip, but it's a hit, daddy ow. It's a hit, daddy tip, but a hit, daddy tip. You know what I mean? He wants to hear that tune because in Bermuda, they love that tune for some mm -hmm. reason. They like that tune, but I haven't done that tune in years. So now I have to go and do my homework on my own lyrics. Yes. So I have to go to YouTube now. Or dig up the old album that it's on and listen to it, <laughs> listen to it, listen to it, listen to it, and study and study so that when I go to Bermuda, boom, That's I can it. drop the tune. So yeah. that is me still doing my homework and my research and, and my thing into my craft. Okay. Big up Brad Spooner, one of my friends. He's driving and he can't see, he can't get the type because he's driving, so he's just... <laughs> Well, Gene, right there. All right, big up yourself, Ras, when you get a chance. All right, Tipper. Beautiful. Yeah, big him up for me. Big him up. Big him yeah, up. Big exactly. up, Ras. Big up, Ras. <laughs> big up, Ras. <laughs> All right. Yeah, man. No, no. Back to us, we're talking about the recording and stuff like that. Yeah. So, what do you fear the most when it comes to producing? Well, just... um. I mean, having a disregard for the music, you know, and what I mean by that yeah. is, you know, like even for example, with a serial, you know, I might record a tune and it's conscious and then the other four pieces are slackness, you know, and nastiness. Okay, okay, okay. So I, I fear, because I don't really want to be associated mm -hmm. with, with no gun lyrics no slapness lyrics um you know i've you know maybe earlier on maybe one or two times i slipped and made a couple of songs that i weren't really proud of mm -hmm. but it's maybe one or two but give me the question again okay give me that same question again okay as i said the question to you was when it comes to producers you know sometimes Producers could always change up a lot of stuff. And, you know, when you, you do the recording, we're in, you explain that part again. But also holding back on your track with a lot of things, you know, sometimes, yeah. you know, you want this. Yeah, thing. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't really have that problem or that mentality. But in the past, when you was when you was coming up, have you ever dealt with that? Yeah. No, I mean, w with green sleeves, it was more them them being disloyal. If you and know, they what sold I, those afterwards, and a lot yeah. of artists that was on there got trapped with VP. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. So this is this is what I'm saying. It's like green sleeves. The guy Chris Cracknell and Chris Cedric. Chris mm -hmm. Cedric was one of the the guy that did with dealt with the the admin for green sleeves and you know if you wanted to cut a check cut you'd have to go and see chris chris cedric chris cracknell dealt with the a and r side of things with green sleeves so this guy is one of probably one of them you know i'm i'm still grateful to them 
for you know seeing my talent and and putting funding behind me mm-hmm. to give me hello darling and and the stuff the stuff that happened in my early career so i have to be grateful to them for that but how they dealt with the artists yeah. before me and after me he, he's a cold guy you know what i mean because before me you had clean eastwood and general saint another one bites the dust Clint and then, oh my god i haven't heard that name in years well there you, you go know? and he's still yeah. around he's still around really? doing bits and pieces yeah no kidding yeah yeah, you should se- you should seek him out. You should seek yeah, him out because he's got. To. I think he's got an album out right now called Survivor. Okay. You know, so, but when we came along, they just let them go. You know, and then when for them days they started the UK bubbleless thing, um, where you had Deborah Glasgow, mm-hmm. um, you know the tune champion lover champion and all these lover. tunes. Yeah, that girl there, very talented woman, Be- beautiful, talented woman, you know, big girl, but mm-hmm. her voice was like an angel, you know, and then you had singers like Peter Spence, Annette B, you know, and singers like that, and then obviously all of the Saxon MCs, we were all on UK Bubblers, and nice. then one one day we just came in and he was like, oh, I'm not doing UK music no more. So. <laughs> So it's like, what? 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 Excuse me? What did you just say? Just like that. So, you know, you give them Hello Darling, which Deborah Glasgow, Mm -hmm. because Deborah Glasgow done a a girl's version of it, of Hello Darling. You're my sugar, you know? And big tune as well. Did very, it very it well. It wasn't. It was. It wasn't a counter action from Europe, please. Right? Yeah, it's like a spin off. Like a spin off. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, and the style she done. You know, they wrote the style and and everything, and it, it was yeah. really good. Good tune. But what mm-hmm. I'm saying, what I'm the point that I'm trying to make is that you had all these talented people at your disposal and on your doorstep. Mm-hmm. And wow. then they just cut. They just cut everything like that. Just cut it, and then he went to um, Gussie Clark. That's how Gussie Clark got his studio in Jamaica, you know, because they invested in Gussie Clark's studio out in Jamaica. That's when rumors from Gregory, all these tunes, them were made, you know. Um, but what he'd done, then you had Mr. Vegas come along. Yeah. You know. And so after us, you know, then came the Vegas and the Shaggy era, and they just let go all of the UK artists then, mm-hmm. and they done Heads Eye and yep. Old Carolina mm-hmm. yep. and these tunes. And then after they that era died down, then they went on to the Cartel, Vibes Cartel era and whatever. Mm-hmm. But the point I'm trying to make is that we gave them hit tunes. You know, it's not like we didn't give them no yeah. hit tunes, and then then all of a they, sudden they just they just they just cut. It's they just new. sold up, so we yeah. helped them to build Greensleeve. Yeah, you helped them to build themselves to 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 sell out. That's right, and then them sell up. Not even uh, boy, tip you know, McGann and you know, mm-hmm. well done. Thanks for the help or thanks. For, nothing. They just cuss out, and nobody hasn't seen them since. You know, no way, you ain't seen them. No. So it's things like that from mm-hmm. so-called executive producers and, you know, producer that I didn't respect. Yes. And didn't appreciate because they they could have dealt with it a bit more respectable because people like Patrick Donegan, who has a label called Progressive Sounds in the UK, and um, help them, you know, they done tunes like Where Is Ja, you know, Reggae Regulars, Wailing mm-hmm. Souls, mm-hmm. all these early tunes help to build Greensleeve. And we're not to say and that then, people can't, can't move on. Yeah, but, but give the respect. Give the respect yeah, for and, guys who and, put you guys where they are. But that's right. And say, yeah. well, boy, tip. But the, for example of Chris Cracknell, you know, for instance, it's like when Hello Darling was in the charts, he got married, you know, 
and I went to his wedding because you know me see him as a oh, as a brethren as a, family, as a friend like because yeah. we depend on the the same label. But let us give the example then, you know, of these people and how they are and how they can be, you know. And so me turn up at wedding, me sing to him, sing hello darling at him wedding and big up him, him and him wife and everything and this and that. When me get married, <coughs> never see him to dust. The, the other guy, the, the guy that was the one of the other partners, he came. Mm -hmm. But the producer that, you know, I was, you might as well say I was supposed to be more close to, right. he didn't come. He didn't turn up. You know, when I brought the pictures in to show the other Chris, and he was like, oh, oh, Tim, Tim, oh, let me have a look at the pictures. You know what I mean? But he couldn't even turn up to, to give me that strength, yeah. you know? And at the time, when Hello Darling was in the charts, you know what I mean? Polydor came knocking, you know, and said, boy, you know, what's the deal with Tip Irie, mm -hmm. you know? They wanted to sign me because obviously I'm in the charts, you know, and because of my loyalty to Greensleeves, mm -hmm. I never even listened to no conversation from Polydor Records because I said, you know what? Greensleeves give me the opportunity, so I'm going to stay with them. With, yes. I'm going to stick loyal. with them. You're loyal. loyal. Yeah. But them... When it came, Rasta, it's like, the, mm. later, tip, bye, see you later. So that is, you know, it's only things like that whereby you feel let down by yeah. people. But all they're showing you as well is that there's no loyalty, man. There's no loyalty in business. To them, you're just a commodity. And, it, and especially right now, how the, 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 the music is, it's like it's a doggy dog world. Yeah, it's a yeah, if, if, if that's why. Said, mm -hmm. If you no, said well, that's to me, why, yeah, go on. <laughs> sorry, it's good. If you it's said good. to me, Triple, I want to do an intro for me on my, my, my next track, it's like, yeah, how much yeah. I'm getting, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything yeah, 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 yeah. is about this. The, yeah, the same yeah, thing that yeah. I was talking to me and Winston Francis was talking about, like, everything is money, money, money. That, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, continue. Yeah. No, because you 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 have to kind of stand up as well. Because if you look at you know you we have organizations like the BBC, which is like the main you know um, company for mm -hmm. broadcasting in the UK, and they have a budget to make documentaries and they'll come to hi tipper irie yeah we, we you know we know that what you're one of the pioneers in the music thing you set you're one of the people that set the way for grime jungle music you know all of these rappers that's out there now, like Stormzy, Skepta, you know, in America, they, maybe a few people might know these guys out in, in the States, but mm -hmm. in the UK, they're, they're, there's a big scene, okay, you know, you've yeah. got Wiley, Wiley's an MC that, you know, one of the pioneers of grime, and all these guys, but we set the way for them, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And then they'll come to us to to do a documentary. And then the so I says, well, so you want my knowledge, mm -hmm. you want my expertise, you want, you know, so where's the budget? Mm -hmm. Because you must have had a budget from the BBC <laughs> yeah. to make this so, documentary. Of course. You know what I mean? And there's all, you know, one came the other day from, um, to make a documentary, I think, one of the guys from Steel Pulse, one of the original members from Steel Pulse, and Ooh. on the con and on, and on the contract it had one pound, you know. But they've yes. obviously given them a budget mm -hmm. to do this documentary, yep. but there's no budget for the people that's giving the people giving the info, the info, and you know, 
And it's the same with the BBC. They came to me the other day. I says, well, yeah, well, you need to go back to your boss and tell him if he wants Tipper Irie's input, there needs to be a budget from, for us because you're going to actually do something with this project at the end of the line. And whether it be showing it to your viewers, which I pay my television mm -hmm. license. Yeah. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you know, I'm paying. I pay. I contribute. I'm not just taking. I pay mm -hmm. my TV license. So if you're going to make something for TV and you want my input and my know-how, my experience, mm -hmm. I can't be just doing these things for free. Because soon, soon I'm doing these things, but soon everything that I do is going to, you know, for now is going to come through Tip Iri, um through Tipper TV, you know, mm -hmm. I'm giving people content and whatever, but most of the stuff what I'm going to do now is going to be yeah. coming through my YouTube channel, you know? There you go. There you go. That's what you have to do. That's what you have to do. All right? Now, as there you go. There you go, um, Sonia West. Definitely. Not loyal, of course. Now, <laughs> they're vising in the yeah. No, no, Tipper. Right now, the levels that you're at right now, do you see any artists, especially in Jamaica, that you'd love to do a collaboration with? Um, wow. I think I'd like to work with Shaggy, do one tune with him, because I like him as a person. You know, he, he's got respect for me and my work. And, you know, he's basically told me that. We haven't had the opportunity. I mean, I guess I'm not Sting. <laughs> but, but, you know, um, but, uh, yeah, but, you know, I'd like to do a tune with Shaggy because I respect him and I respect what he's achieved. And I, I think that we would we'd make some good music. So I'd like to do one tune with him. I like Jesse Royal. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesse that Royal. is an artist that I like very much. And he's um, so amazing, he's not being recognized the way he should be. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I like him a lot. You know, I'd like to do a tune with Jesse Royal. One of my favorite art MCs is Professor Nuts. So I'd like to still try to do a tune with Professor Nuts. Mm -hmm. um, the, the newer artist, I like Assassin. Okay. Um, I like, I just like his, um, the way he puts his tunes together. You know, his I, voice. Like, I like that power. Yeah, his yeah. Voice power too, his like, voice. Yeah. yeah, he's a good artist. Yeah. He's a good artist. I really like him. So I would mind doing me, a tune. He reminds me of him. his signal. Yeah. He reminds me of it. Yeah. 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 Some of them artists, I'm very weary of them. You know, because they they can be very standoffish. Yes. You know, and I find that with some of them, busy signals one of them. You know what I mean? Because I went to, I don't normally talk these things on yeah. social media, but so I went, what it, I was. what it is though. It's what it is. You know, yeah, no, well, so, well, I, yeah. well, it's experiences. Cause one mm -hmm. at a time I, I did a show at the, in Kimse and in Germany and I'm in my cubicle because what I find with a lot of some of these young artists, they don't know me mm -hmm. or they know me or they play like they don't know me or right. whatever. But with me, it's like, I'm cool. You know, I try to get on with everybody and I respect every artist and every individual and I try to treat people the same, mm -hmm. you know. But, you know, and with me, it's like, I know how to entertain. <laughs> I've, I've been doing it for a long time. Yeah, so I, see I know... Stage. That's yeah, so it's thing. like, yeah. when I was at this festival, I mean, I'll give you a quick story. I'm at the festival, and I'm in my cubicle chilling with my band and, and whatever. And nobody ain't paying me no mind because it was a guy called Ganja Man. He's, a, he's an MC from Germany. Very mm -hmm. nice guy. Very nice brother. Talented guy. He's a talented DJ, talented MC. And he, he, done, he, done, my, he done the video for... Stick to my roots. Um, the tune that I've got called Stick to My Roots. He done the video for that. But he got sick. And they called me and they said, Tip, Ganja Man is sick. Would you be able to do this slot? 
And the band that he used, I worked with them before. So I said, no okay. problem, man. So they sent me a ticket. I went out there chilling, you know. When when I when I when I got on stage with the band, you know, and I'm and there was nobody backstage, just the band and me. Because we're kind of like in the opening slot. You know what I mean? And so by the time we're in the second or the fourth tune now, I've got these thousands of people eating out of my hand. You know? Mm. So when I look around now, all of a sudden the backstage is full. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, where will these people come from? But because I'm mashing down the whole place now, yeah. all of a sudden now, everybody, oh, they, they remember Tipper Irie now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because me, I mash up the place. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I mash up the show, come off, show everybody cameras and this and that and oh, great show and rare, rare, rare. But anyway, Busy Signal did arrive then. So when I come off stage, I cool down or whatever. So I knock on the cubicle and say, Bridgerton, me just come off stage and I tip Irie. Can I take a picture with your brother? Boy, me not take picture and me not take picture until after me show you know. Are you I serious? Go, oh. Yes, yeah, so I go. Oh. oh wow! I went. Oh, okay then. Okay. Cool. Uh, you know, but because I was kind of in shock. You know what I mean? Of, so course, I like, of course. I was like, okay then. Cool. No problem, mate. Eh? Because I said, if it's me, you think I'm going to wait till you finish you, doing all your journeys and go back for your arts you know, again. You know it's that not going to happen. You know that right. So, uh, yeah, so, <laughs> so, so this is what I'm saying. So, I've become weary of certain of these artists. You know what I mean? Because it's like them forget, or them not have no respect, or them, them think them above certain people because yeah. they reach certain level. But I... I've reached those levels and still, you and know, a foundation person. So it's that like, paid you know, away. It, for these people, yeah. you understand me? And another artist, you know, you go and check them, they might, you go and say hello, they, they turn away like they're on their phone. And you mm -hmm. know they're not on their phone, but they just don't want to say hello. Mm -hmm. And then you go and meet a next one and, you know, what miss a man and mm. uh hello and they know nothing i'm so oh, all right all right cool i'm a walk out so the other day i was in la mm. and i went to a, a an anthony b show right and anthony b is an artist that i love you know what i mean and i was support one of my brethren them was supporting him yeah right they were supporting him, and um, so I came there, and his backing band must have realized, I said, right, that's Tipper Irie, you know? So, me just got, I said, hello, and then I said hello to the drummer or whatever was there, and then I did my support slot, because I've they just because i got two tunes on their album, so they asked me to come and do the two tunes them in California. So, I said, all right, boom. So, me do the two tune them, and I was there with my missus, so I just went out, into the crowd because i said i'm just gonna go into the audience and just and enjoy. watch the, and enjoy yeah. the show yeah so he came out and he done an excellent show and the show was wicked you know what i mean and but i said to myself is this ain't got nothing to do with anthony b you know because he seems like a genuinely nice brother mm -hmm. yeah. but i said to myself i'm not going backstage to say nothing, I'm just gonna watch his show, enjoy and see what I can learn mm -hmm. from him because you're never too old to learn, to learn. and, to and just and watch the show. Mm -hmm. And you know, and normally I would have gone backstage and said, Bridget, great, but because mm -hmm. how of how I've been treated in yes. the past, so I said just... to myself, you know what, mm -hmm. let me just watch the show, enjoy the show, appreciate of the show, and leave it at that. You know what I mean? And when he was leaving, I was outside, and he kind of give me a look for say like, well, why? Maybe you should like, what? You, you, like, oh, come you now, say nothing to me or whatever. Because I've got jingles from Anthony B and this and that. But because I've been bitten so many times yes. by them artists from Jamaica there, now I just stand off. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If they come to me and say, Tipper, 
hello, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be the first one to give them the love and show yes. them how much I admire them and mm. respect them. But because of how I've been treated in the past, no, mm. I don't do that no yeah. more. I, I don't know. Maybe once, I'm once I'm being twice, once twice, 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 two, and it's not one time or three times. <laughs> you know what I mean? But me now nah, call no name. Me yes. call one name. Mm -hmm. Right, I call one name, but there's two others that done it. Next time, next time we squeeze my name, we burn them out for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. But anyway, he will, so, he, he will, so will never I, do But I just want to say, as well, if Anthony B is watching, brother, me love you, I respect your work, and I wasn't dissing you or any anything to do with you. It's just that the experiences what I've had with some of these Jamaican artists yeah. that met me say, you know what, me I got enjoy and preach the love the show and keep it at that and leave it at that. Now and that's all I'm not for that. There you go. Big track. <laughs> Yeah, I think this one's short. Don't step up, please, no one in my This song is not long. Is this the one that I sent you? It's only one. It's only one thirty seconds. Thirty, I think. My missus is probably gonna look at me now and and, and <laughs> lick me across the head, you know. So don't she, lie. She, she, she's telling don't me, lie. yeah, she's <laughs> telling me that all the time. Now, um, yeah, sometimes you have to, you know, you have to make that time because recently, what I've been doing is going on holiday with my queen and going, um, you know, going to Jamaica a lot because we got a family home there. And so I go there a lot to check on the plays and make sure everything is all right and this so, and that. So, you, so stick a pin right there. Stick a pin right yeah. there. Yeah. So you go to Jamaica as Lady Relax. Not an artist. Yeah. Not an yeah, artist. that's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. A lot of the times I don't, <laughs> I don't. Well, well, you see, everything is it's the same even in Jamaica, you know. I mean, I was in Usain Bolt's place the other day in um in Jamaica, down in Ochi. And a guy from, one of the DJs from Irie FM, he, 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 he was in there eating some food. So I'm sitting there and saying, what? Tipo Irie, what, man? I said, I'm there, you know, I'm just a cool out. He said, you there? I said, yeah, man. I said, yeah, man, I live in the, we live in the area. He said, boy, are you there from England? I said, yeah, 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 I'm yeah. here. So he phones, so he wants to do an interview with me <laughs> straight away. But he phoned up his boss and he goes, Boy, I got Tipo Irie here from England, you know, and would I love to do an interview? And his boss, like, Well, I don't know who that is. You know what I mean? <laughs> and this is Irie <laughs> FM, right? <laughs> Muta Boruka, Menor Muta. Yeah? <laughs> Me know Muta, Muta play me, me music. <laughs> Hello, darling, Pan IRFM before. Yes. And so when he put down the phone now, 
Mm-hmm. The guy goes, boy, Tipa, he come in like if I no bounty or cartel exactly. or beanie man, him no know this brother and no know nobody. He, you he's know. in the wrong business. But this is what I'm trying to say to What he's supposed to so, do, the first thing he do, simple thing, go to YouTube first. All right. Typically, I, I would have done. That's right. Go to YouTube and see. And when yes. I see your catalog of music, first I'm like, wow. That's right. I think I'm getting under something here. You That's know? right. <laughs> you know, so, and but this is the, the same mentality that they have in Jamaica. Yes, you know, true. and in amongst black people in general, because there's many shows that I've been to, and none of them artists there now pay me no mind because I would have bred I up. But when me go up on the stage and me you turn over it. the whole place, and you shell it all of a sudden. Them who I know who Tipper is after me done. But before the show, them now give you the time of day. And I've experienced that so much. You know, one time me and Admiral Tibet I drive and nice spreader. You know what I mean? Me and him are reason and mm-hmm. you know, and he he wasn't working that day. He was working the day before. But me and him I drive to the show in a Germany many a few years ago now. You know, and he said, yes, Tipa, me about you, you know, from England and, and this and that. And, you know, may I come check your show? Because he was working the next day. So I come at the show now and return the place. I think it was one of the best performances I ever done at a festival. And when we are driving back in the car, and I said, Tipa, oh, me, I go follow that Rasta. You know what I mean? <laughs> I said, I said, Bridgman, just, just do you. Yeah, you know, just do your thing, you know what I mean? And I saw it, I forgot. And you know, but you just have to be yourself and mm-hmm. stay true to what make you what you is. But a lot of the time is the mentality yeah. of right. the crabbing a barrel mentality and the narrow mindedness and the belief that you really need them more than, more than they, they need you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. without us making the music, you wouldn't have no music to play. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. So it's this weird. is why I don't, I don't, I send my music out. Mm-hmm. And if you like my music, you play my music. There you go. If you don't like my music, then you play somebody else's music where you like. Mm-hmm. And I wish you and that person the best of luck. Is it, is it is the same problem? that I have here, especially dealing with DJs. Now, you send me your music, I have your music, I, you know, I have a couple of your music here that you send me. Now, me sending it to another DJ, the, the first thing, you know, he's saying, ah, okay, I'm a, okay, I'm a dog, tell, tell him to send me a dog and stuff like that, tell him to send me this, tell him to send me that. All right? And you send him a dub, he play your dub. <laughs> may, may play your song one time. Or yeah, if I send him, if what I, I'm saying. Yeah. And if but I send him your you song, go mm, ahead. Right. Yeah, well, this is what I'm saying. Is it about the music or is it about you? You know what I mean? And what I mean by that, you, your job as a DJ is to play the music you know and if you're good at playing your music you will get work as a DJ you know what I mean and if you want to promote yourself mm-hmm. yeah and you want to dub play it costs I've, I have electric bill I have I have a studio that is an equipment that costs money to oh. run wear and tear my time costs money your job is to play the music that we give you yeah yeah? at the end of the day you already want me to do a dub for you for me to do a dub play it costs 150 pounds yeah but you want me to do you a favor and give Mm -hmm. you a dub play 
free, oh, free yeah. in hoping that you're going to play my music. Well, yeah. play my music for a little while, no? There you go. Play my music for a little while to, and show me that if I can say, you know what? If Commander B call me and say, Tip, I want a dub, me do it for him straight away because I'm a play Tip of Irie music. Yes. You know, but how can you want a dub play and you ain't even played my tune for a week? One you hand ain't watching played the yet. other. One hand exactly. the other. Exactly. So you play my tune and make people have phoned me and say, Tip, you know, say, blah, blah, you know, say, you know, GT Taylor play your tune. I say, eh? all right, then boom, me send him a dub because he's supporting me. Yeah. But you can't expect to get a dub from me, and you know you ain't even played my tune yet. Mm -hmm. But yet still, you want me to give you, give you, give you, and yep. you haven't given me anything yet. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. So a lot of the time, I can't be asked. I can't be asked with them. I send my music out. If you like it, you play. If you, you don't play. like if it, you don't, then you so don't. be. You know, sometimes yes. everybody has to eat food. You know, but all this payola thing and all this business, I know mm -hmm. I'm not with it. Not with it. No, okay. Now, we're wrapping up here. And um, this other track that I want to play this one Living Your Dream. Yes, I am. <laughs> I see you feeling that one, brother. Yo, yo. No. <laughs> there's so much music, man. There's, brother, there's so much tunes. I've got so much tunes. 
Just just seek me out, man. Spread it, spread it, spread it. Last night, I went through so much, and I'm like, I called freedom, like, and thank thank you for resending me because I guess because yes, my chat yeah. was sitting sitting there expired. So when I yeah, yeah, yeah. like, free them. But I got one, two, three, four, ten, eleven. I'm missing all but but you know what happened? I'm working with this year, but I have to get the rest. Whatever he has, I want them. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no I'll, I'll like send that. it, man. I'll send it. Yeah. And sometimes the computers, I don't know what's wrong with them, man. You're trying to send files. Mm -hmm. And some go, some, some don't and, go, yeah. and uh, it's so, it's a nightmare sometimes. And I did that, and I and and then me and Bev last night we said I was going through going through some shows, some live shows that you yeah, did. Yeah, big up Bev as well, man. Yeah, <laughs> listen to me. You work your stage. Yes, man. No, man. You have to give. You know, you people spend stage. people spend their hard earned money to come and see you. So I try my best to give 100% and try to do my research to find out what's the best tunes to do and what's the best vibe and how to approach it. Sometimes I reach a show and I had a particular kind of show planned. And then when I see the audience and I see the vibe, I'll mm -hmm. switch it up we'll to switch try it up. Yes. Yeah, to try and accommodate the audience because you never know sometimes your plan works sometimes it might not work mm -hmm. but you if you if you the key is enjoying what you're doing when people see that you're enjoying it and and you know because you're going to have screw face people in the place mm -hmm. so Can't you so you as a performer there might be a section of the crowd that's going to say Chow, let me see what we can do you know and then there's going to be a section of the crowd that's your hardcore fans and they love everything. What mm -hmm. And then there's just going to be happy people. And then there's going to be the screw face people. So all you do, you focus on the people that's happy and you, you work with them. Because they give you that energy. And that yeah, because they give you that yeah, energy. So and, then, and then nine times out of ten, the screw face. And you don't know what people, you know, people are going through. You know, there's this guy, I was watching a video of myself the other day, and there was this guy there, and the whole show, he was, his face was solemn. So I'm thinking that this guy, maybe he don't really like my music and that. But then at the end of the show now, he was like... <laughs> so, he, and you can see, he really enjoyed the show. He, so he sometimes was taking in everything, that's, everything that's that you right. put out, it was like he's looking it within himself and like, wow. That's right, and taking it in. He yes, he's taking, yeah. it in. He, he's taking it in. So you don't know what people are going through. You don't know what people are going through in their life. You mm. don't know. That's why when you see people, you leave them and you know you mind your own business. Sometimes if they ask for your help, you help them. You know because you don't know. You know, that's why road rage and all these things, I don't bother with it. Because if yeah. I'm in my car, I'm in my car because I have to get to a destination. So I'm not going to jump out of my car to fight somebody because mm -hmm. they cut me up. I ain't got time for that. You go, you keep it moving. And, you know, and that's what you have to do when you're on stage. You keep it moving. There's going to be these screw face people over there. You can't work with them because they're going to put you off your show. You know what I mean? You focus on the happy people and the good people. Okay. Now... Yes, sir. Now, another thing that I want to ask you. Now... Yes, sir. A lot of artists, especially Jamaican, and you always see, they hit, you know, majority of them when they started out, and I always say, love, life, you have so much things to sing about. So much happy yeah. things, as you stated. But a lot of them always think that focusing on gays. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Out of their gun. And who forgets shut up and, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You as an artist, mm -hmm. what do you have to say about artists that penetrate gays or penetrate lesbian or penetrate gun thing? What would you say? Well, well the gun issue is like, you know, at the end of the day, what, you know, 
people might grow up in an environment, right, mm -hmm. where these things are happening. Yes. But when you're an elder, you know, it's part of your responsibility to educate people that are younger than you or uh, and okay. people that might not be educated mm -hmm. for whatever reason some people are not educated because of poverty or because of um for whatever reason their circumstances and whatever it may be and because of that you know they're easily led it's like the blind leading the blind yeah, yeah. you know so you as an executive producer the chances of you being an executive producer and have the funding to release a record to promote a record right you must have some kind of education you must have some kind of sense mm -hmm. and that education and sense should tell you that this thing is affecting our pl our people and if you have no conscience as an artist to write a lyric about blowing somebody's brain out and knowing that your fans that look up to you might take that on board and think well if if such and such is saying this it's and like, i worship okay. him it's okay. i'm gonna uh, it's okay and then you as a DJ that plays music, somebody brings this, a producer brings this into you and plays you this song about blowing off a marrow and this and that and that, that, that. And then you go and take that upon yourself to play that to your people. You know, what is that saying really about you? You know what I mean? So it starts from the artist, the producer, because the artist has to have the idea. Yeah. Then he brings that to the producer. And then the producer has to then, you know, produce that idea. Mm -hmm. And then it goes to the next level of the actual DJ that has the direct... To the people. To the people. To feed, and then you as a DJ are taking that in and feeding that to your people. I don't understand it. I don't understand why they inflict <laughs> this pain on their own people. And it's yeah. like gangster rap, you know. I love Dr. Dre. Yeah. I think he's one of the greatest producers of all time. Yeah. I love Snoop Dogg. I love Eminem. I love all these people because of their skills. But I like Nas. Yeah. The reason oh. why I like Nas is because yeah. of his lyrical yeah. content. So go. this is what I'm saying. You know, it's the artist, the producer, the DJ. Those three elements, you know, you're feeding this negativity to your people. All right. You back? Yeah, we got this guy. I have no idea. Just got disconnected, but we're still, we're still live. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay. You know. Yeah. I mean, I like think... I said, they've been, they've been feeding, they're feeding these negativity to mm -hmm. their people. You know what I mean? So it's not, it, it's not, it's not going to do good because if you think about it, you know, the gangster rap thing, these guys may, may be, financially secure 
now, but how yeah. much people have died because of yeah because of it, mm -hmm. just like the negativity. As far as the gay thing, you know what people want to do in their bedroom, that's, that's their business. Yeah, you know it's none of my business. I just don't think that we as people need to highlight. Mm -hmm. Highlight. It. <laughs> yeah, I like that. You know I like that I mean? answer. I like that answer. You know, like we don't need answer. to highlight that. That that's their business. What they want to do in their bedroom, mm -hmm. that's for them business. They do what they want to do. But you know, don't bring it to me because that's not me. But yeah. what you want to do in the privacy of your home, that's down to you and whatever you want to do. But with it's, me personally, I'm leaving them to it. It's so crazy. Like I did interviews with a lot of artists from Jamaica and um, Triple. You know, you could play track number few. Track what? Track number few. I'm like, track number few? Is that a title of the track or what? Um, I look, I don't see track few. What is track few? Track, track number two? No, few. I don't say two, I say few. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and um, yeah. then, then, oh, you know, what do you like to eat? Uh, I like them swimmers. I eat a lot of them swimmers. <laughs> uh, Fish. Swimmers. Fish? No, 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 no. What man has a fish? Man, a man, a man and thing of fish. No, associate me. But I said, that's what you eat, dude. So, yeah. so, put you to that. Tip of Irie. What type of food man like you like to eat? Yeah, I mean, I love, you know, the food from the Caribbean. Um, I'm trying I know, my... I know, I know we're getting off the chicken. Yeah, I'm trying to. <laughs> well, what, well, what I've done, I mean, what I would buy, I mean, I, me personally, mm -hmm. I do like fried chicken. No, oh, do you? I do like, I do like fried chicken. I like brown stew chicken. I do like chicken. I don't mind chicken, you know. Um, and Go for the baked chicken I like, instead of the fried. Yeah, a lamb. I like my lamb and stuff like that. But now, you know. I'm trying to, I've, what I've done, what I advise people to do is find out your blood type, yeah? And then there's a, there's a site called Eat Right for Your Type, you know? And basically what, what that does is you can um, go on there, check out for your blood type, whether you're, you might be a B count or whatever or something like that. Um, you can go in there and check out what, agrees with your blood you know what i mean so so it's told me that i've got to lay off the chicken so i'm i'm cutting all of that stuff out you know what i mean so now i'm trying to switch up my diet because i was a lot bigger but mm -hmm. as you can see now i'm losing a little bit of the weight it's coming okay. off because i'm trying to eat more veg, more veg green more healthier you know what i mean and trying my best to to be healthy so, but, you know, obviously, I love Caribbean food, man. You know, what can I say? I've grown up on the traditional ackee and salt fish, you know, um, rice and peas, you know, yam banana, dashing, green banana, all the ba all the things that are bad for you. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean? a lot of you know, carbs. Yeah, yeah, a lot of carbs, you know what I mean? And your stuff. And all of yeah, yeah, you know, I, I've grown up on that food. So, obviously... Now, as I'm getting older, I'm trying to be more veg, more vegan, moving towards the vegan vibe. Oh, you I have to the vegan? That's being serious right here. Now. Yeah, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know, because wow. there's lots of things that you can find to eat, but I'm still, you know, I do like salmon, for instance. I do like fish. That's me, you know. Right yeah, I, I like salmon steak. Yeah, yeah, I like. I like fish and so I, I eat, you know, a variety of food, nice. you know what I mean? I'm, I like, I don't mind noodles, a little bit of pasta, not much pasta, uh, mm. more noodles than pasta, um, stir fry. So I'm trying to, my missus is getting me like all stir fry veg and stir mm. fry stuff and yeah, to just to try and keep the weight down because it's not good to be too heavy on stage, you know? <laughs> Okay, especially it's not a good look. Run. <laughs> That's yeah. good. Now, as I said, we're wrapping up here. And today, yes, my brother. I'm ready so, to eat some food now. Definitely. <laughs> now, for you know, being out there, as I said, in the business, and you still 
very much current with your music, as yeah. you all can see, ladies and gentlemen, here. Now, my question to you is, the young artist com coming up, yeah, and he said he comes to you and said, Tipper, what should I do? How should I start up this business? I love the music thing. I want to get into it. I'm a good writer, and I also could perform what I write. But well, what, what should well, I what, first do? Mm -hmm, go ahead. Well, if you, well, if you, if you got a job, and you're doing obviously, if you're just starting, then you know you need to get your education straight. Yep. That's so, key, right? in yep. other words, you know, you need to understand the business, the business. that you're getting into. Ah. So, understand the music, but understand the business, because, because mm -hmm. really, you wanna, you're doing music to, and you want it to be your career. So, you have to do that music because you love it, but you also have to take care of the business end, you know, the PRS. Performing Rights Society, PPL, you know, all these other aspects of the business so that when you make the record and it goes out off. there, yeah, you don't get ripped off and you you have an income. You can generate an income from it. Mm -hmm. But it's making music that you, um, you, you, you feel proud of. And, and what I mean by that is that you know, you can make music and just make throw, I call it throwaway music, mm -hmm. you know. But if you're a young artist, better you save your money and contact somebody that's professional at what they do. Mm -hmm. Like you look at an artist, for instance, you know, say that, the, you know, like Chronics. So yeah. if you take Chronics, he makes good music, you know. I like his music. I admire the way how they've managed his career and the level that he's moving at now, right? But you then you you look at the engineer that has mixed certain of, yeah. of his tracks and you might seek out that person, you know, and you save your money and you mm -hmm. say, Bridgerton, I really admire your work, you know, I would like, you know, I'd like a drum track, I'd like, you know, I'd like a drum track, I'd like just the, 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 a sketch of the music, you know what I mean, to start me off, you know, mm. you know, how do you, how do you recommend, how do you recommend I go about that and what would it cost me if I wanted to get you to do me a track like that, what is the bare minimum it would cost me? Yeah. to get a track like that to that standard because that's the level that you want to be at so right. you might as well start the way you mean to carry on yeah and try to make music that is going to last forever and not yeah. just throw just away throw music, music. Because, because you want to because you want it i want it i want it i want to be an mc i want to be an artist i want to be the, 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 the. Mm. better you try work save your little money and try to make good quality music so that when he sends it to you mm -hmm. and you and it, and you listen to the first 30 seconds it grabs you straight away because it's good it's good music it's well produced it's well mixed it's mastered it's well put together you know and that's you know what i would advise them advise them find out about the music unions what are out there to mm -hmm. get advice about the industry yeah. because you can't there's a lot of cannibals mm -hmm. there you go in the industry and sometimes it's hard to see those cannibals but if you've got talent they'll appear yeah they will because you've got talent you know so if you don't see them people appearing around you right away then you know you got work to do Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Somebody like Romain and Virgo, talent. So everybody wants to work with you because you've got talent. Somebody like Chronix has got talent. So all these people are going to say, you know what, that bread I are, I'm talent, you know, so, they're moi, so the managers will come, people will, I want to manage you. 
Mm, Producers are like, I want to work with you. Everybody is your friend. Mm. You know what I mean? Because so called because of the, what they so can called. Do. Yeah, that's right. So all these people and these vultures they appear. You know what I mean? Which was when you was probably at the beginning and at the start, they weren't there. You know what I mean? And that is the music business. So you have to just tread carefully and take your time, try to make good product and believe in your product and be open very, very to, to criticism. Very good answer. Yeah, constructive criticism. Constructive exactly. criticism. Now, yeah. what can we look out to see from you now? Well, anybody that wants to find out anything about me, yeah. um, my website is not the greatest. But it's it's tipperivory.com, right? So on my website, they can see my shows. They can see my, if they want to get a Tipper Ivory t-shirt mm -hmm. like this, they can buy one on the site. They okay. can they can so contact you have, me. You have, you have merchandise, merchandise on, on there. Merchandise on there, yeah? And obviously my bio is there so they can check the history. Um, there's... You know, my links and my contacts are there. So if they want to book me for a show, a concert, a dub plate, if they want to do a recording, anything like that, they just go to tipperirie.com. I'm on all of the social medias, them, apart from Snapchat. I can't really get my head around that. But, um, yeah, but and Facebook, yep. they got Tipper Irie fan page, Anthony Henry, they can find me. On Instagram, it's at Tipper Irie. On, on Twitter, it's at Tipper Irie 7665. They can find me. All right? Bless up. Bye bye, people. Yeah, yeah, lost you like, again, brother. <laughs> yeah, no, this kid, well, we're wrapping up. I have two more questions. The network, they said they, 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 they have having issues with connection and stuff like that. All right. All right. Now, with that being said and done, how would you like to be remembered? Why, just somebody, you know, that, that wrote good songs, good lyrics, made people happy, man, you know? And just just to be respected, you know, as, as somebody that wrote good lyrics, made people laugh, made people happy with my lyrics and with my music, you know? Simple. Very good. Very good. I love that. The, one more thing. 98.3. That radio station, you still on there? 98.3. No, that was RJR. I'm the on RG. a new I'm on a new station now called okay. Deluxe Radio. Mm, listen, ladies and gentlemen, deluxeradio.com. Yeah, so it's D E L U X Radio.com. Deluxeradio.com. Give it to me and again one more time. D E L U X Radio. Mm. dot com deluxeradio dot com yeah one word okay. and yeah, what, um my show is on, my show is on Mondays from ten till twelve it's a brand new station but it sounds it's like GMT you're listening time. that's GMT yeah okay. GMT time yeah okay, GM, so ten so it's from ten at night to twelve midnight GMT okay. time in uh in the UK so you can log on around the world wherever you are and check out my show i just play music from around the world music that i love and music um from the uk is predominantly but obviously i'm playing the caribbean because i have to you know what yeah. i mean because it's about it's reggae music you know what i mean so yeah mondays from 10 to 12 they can tune in tomorrow
from because I'll be on at 10, 10 to 12. Nice. GMT time. All right? Ladies and gentlemen, Tipper, listen to me. It's been a pleasure. Much Long respect, respect sir. You, and we have to big up um, Frida, Murphy, that yes. is possible. Possible. And, and Bev and as well. Bev, see you. Definitely. Red in massive, red in massive, large. <laughs> Tipper, thank you very much. Manners right. and respect, sir. Give time. All in this. Perfect. Hi. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. I'm the 